we don't rent tools or equipment because we have everything here mm. to build a uh, two stores uh, house. Hello guys and welcome back to our uh, vlog channel as Z and Kev. Today we are profiling um, Vic. Uh, I will let him introduce himself but uh, just to give you a bit of background, uh, me and Calvin met Vic through the Mandela Washington Fellowship. You guys know that uh, Calvin and I are Mandela Washington Fellows. And so we've been hanging around a lot of MWF guys and they're doing really well. So, uh, up to you, can you kindly introduce yourself? Give us your name, yeah. <laughs> the your place where we names, are, your okay. pet names, yes. yeah, everything. <laughs> okay, I'm Victoria Carfo, and uh, I live here in Bumse, in the rural community of Bumse. Mm -hmm. And uh, I run a vocational training center, and that vocational training center is a non profit. Okay. Yes. What's the name of the vocational? Uh, Centre de Formation Professionnelle en Construction. Okay, guys, you know I'm still learning French. Eh? <laughs> I will not even attempt. <laughs> I'm still learning, but we will put the name. It's vocational we'll put the name down here. training center for construction Ch trainings. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Vic has just given us a tour of the of the of the of the center. And I think some of the things that we saw were really um, very touching. Um, but maybe just to give a background, so what, what does the center do? What are you guys doing here? Okay, um, the center, CFPC as we call it, Centre de Formation mm -hmm. Professionnelle en Construction, we train young vulnerable people to make them um, financially self-sufficient. So uh, each year we recruit young guys, I mean young girls and uh, young boys that are thriving, guys that are poor, some of them are orphans, and uh, we train them in the construction trades. Uh, by construction trades, I mean uh, every trade that comes in the construction and equipment of a house. So we train them in masonry. Uh, in masonry, we have bricklayers, we have um, designers, okay. and we train them in uh, woodworking, how to make furniture with wood, and we also train them in uh, welding. Okay. And uh, that's the that's in the um, the type of regular training we have here. In the, in the center yes but we have another type of training short-term training that we call um, chantier école chantier école it means a school on site okay so okay. explain that again. yeah it for example uh, last year or maybe not last year uh, five, five five years ago we built a clinic for a village Okay. And uh, to build that clinic, we hire, not hire, we recruit uh, local people. We train them in the construction business. We train them in electricity. We train them in uh, tiling. We train them in roofing. ceiling, uh, yeah, roofing, paint, house painting. And they build the clinic by themselves. Okay, that's amazing. Yes, so that's what we call chantier école. Ah. On site. <laughs> Chantier Eco. Yes. Uh -huh. See, we do French, guys. <laughs> okay, so so uh, how did the center um, start? I think you, you shared with us that um, it was started or founded by a Canadian guy. I think you said best. Yes, yeah. Roger Bast. Yes, so how, how, how did he Yes, decide? Roger Bast <laughs> is a um, very sensitive person. Yes. And to me, he's a hero. He came to Bikina several times to help build an orphanage. And he worked with local masons. And uh, he himself is uh, an engineer. And during the construction 
he saw or he realized that the masons, local masons he work, he works with missed some some skills and he asked them where did you learn or where did you guys learn to, to, to mason they said uh, on site on the job didn't you go to school no we didn't go to school why didn't you go to school to learn masonry because we are lacking some of the skills skills and they said because vocational training in Burkina is very expensive really yes it's very expensive in Burkina yeah okay going to is the university is even less expensive than doing vocational training here. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that, that's a lot to take in. Um, so, you mean, say, someone wants to study um, just bricklaying or like some of the elements that you're teaching here yeah. in, a, in, a, in a private uh, college? Mm -hmm. Generally, like an average, how much would that, how much would that be? Like an average, um we'll have uh a thousand canadian dollars wow guys we'll put down here i think maybe it's good to put down like a a, a basic household like income and then look yeah. at the price because even a thousand a thousand canadian dollars to study <laughs> <laughs> a TV program is really expensive, yeah. so you guys are really doing are really doing well. So on a yearly basis, um, you said you take how many how many students? Uh, we take ten students per per trade. We don't take more than ten because we have only one teacher per trade, and more than ten students for one teacher is huge. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because we want our graduates to be on the top list. So we really train them. We don't, for example, I met with some, some donors who were complaining about the number of students we train per year. They want big numbers. Yes. I told them we are not into big numbers. We yeah, are not into too. changing lives, transforming lives. lives yeah. Yes, and most of our students who graduated, can you realize that I already saw a father coming here mm -hmm. With a motorcycle because his son bought him the motorcycle that's yeah i think you you, you he, told his us son graduated here you told us a story i think which for us um when we were coming here which which was which was touching you you said you had a student who's uh who was who was studying or is studying at the at the center and he has a family like a wife and a child yeah. Uh, back home, and he could not. He, he was at a point where he could not continue with. Uh, because his family asked him to come and get his wife. His wife was staying in the family. Mm -hmm. As the student doesn't work anymore, he's learning the trade. Yes. He doesn't provide for his wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, the parents called him, asked him to come and get his wife away because they won't feed her. And he decided to resign and go back to the village, get his wife, and uh, find a job. So I proposed them to come here mm -hmm. in Buse. Yes. Uh, we paid a rent. For, and for, for him and his family. Exactly. Because when I heard the story, I talked about him to um, a Canadian who decided to provide for. To sponsor for. To sponsor for. Uh, his rent, yeah, accommodation, food, everything for him and his wife. Okay, so maybe if you can give us like, um, what would you call it? Like a big, a, a bit of background in terms of um, the community in which uh, the center is located. I know you mentioned uh, certain cultural uh, hindrances when it comes to you guys recruiting girls into the programs you do here. And also issues like the ones that we were talking about. Maybe you can give like a, like just a snippet of how that situation is, and why also you you guys decided to say okay as a as a center we're going to focus on um, the construction industry. Um, the center stays in an area which is attracted by 
um, immigration or migration. Oh, so that means like a lot of the people are migrating. Yes. Uh, is this are they are migrating to a city or they're migrating outside outside of the country? Outside of the country. Okay. Yes, and uh, putting the center here uh, was a good deal for us as we can avoid young guys to migrate. Also, this but is illegal, my, il yeah, illegal, illegal yeah, migration. Yeah, illegal migration. This is where people jump. Yeah. yeah. In Zim, we call it jump the border. Eh? Yeah, this is illegal. <laughs> I mean, um, in West Africa, um, um, I can travel to West Africa, in West African countries, without a visa. Okay. Yeah. And they do. Okay. But when they cross the border... The borders to, of West Africa when they're... Yes. Because they start uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, they go there to work in the fields, and then after Cote d'Ivoire, they try Liberia, and then they want to try uh, Europe. Europe. Okay. Yeah. So it, it is a good deal for us because we are doing uh, a human job, providing, uh, avoiding them to be uh, to die at sea, you know, mm -hmm. trying to reach European borders. But in 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 another way, it's not a good deal for for them culturally. Okay, so culturally they don't some do not see the benefits of the sector. Okay. I, I so are you recruiting um, how many how many students do you take from the local um, like the surround not local area but like surrounding just maybe the the, the homes surrounding the center are they mm -hmm. sending their kids or they don't if they're not what is what is the rationale behind? They, they don't. Say, yes. But I'm sorry, we get some students uh, who lives uh, maybe 50 kilometers away from the center. They come to the center every morning using a bicycle. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? It's yeah. very far. And it's hot, guys. And it's like, hot. Um, yeah. It's hot. It's so easy. they they don't attend the center just because they didn't catch a vision. To them. The center is here to help them financially. Because oh, they would they rather they would rather receive the the money rather than exactly, training. Exactly. So they want fishes. They don't want to learn. They, how they to want. Fish. They don't want to learn how to fish. So they, I approach them, you know, as a, a communicator. I, I try to discuss with them, um, um, see what they want from us before I can share the vision with them. And what they want want from us is loans. They want us to give them loans, loans so they can cultivate, they can buy um, machines to cultivate and produce uh, vegetables and stuff like that. I told them, yes, it's true, but we cannot help you into that because it's not in our vision. Okay. Yeah. We tried. You we tried, tried to, to provide water, as I told you, because yes. we, uh, we drill all around to find some water so they can... Uh, grow vegetables and stuff like that. Unfortunately, we didn't get water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we we did our part, but they don't want to do their part. And most of the young guys around, they prefer selling bread and eggs by the roadside so they can get money to take a bus to Cote d'Ivoire. Okay. So so the students, majority of the students that you you you're getting here, then where are they coming from? Which areas? It's outside. It's <laughs> outside. It's outside, it's from villages Ma outside. Mount Fora is like uh, 60 kilometers away from Waga, but we have one student coming from Mount Fora. Fora. Yes. And you, you At the don't border have... with Cote d'Ivoire, he came from there. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And we have some displaced persons who heard about the center mm -hmm. and they jumped in. Oh, so, so like people that are coming from... Um, the places I know you guys, uh, if you follow the news, you know um, some of the issues that are happening within Burkina Faso around uh, the northern parts, the northern parts of the border, the border parts. Uh, right? Northern, eastern. Yeah, yeah. where um, there has been uh, some terrorist attacks around, around that area. And so a lot of people, um, particularly women and, and girls, right, who, mm -hmm. who have been displaced and they're coming into uh, the center of the country um, and usually a lot of them from from what I've heard and you can correct me is that a lot of them don't have a trade 
Yeah. Right. And so they are finding this place as a place of hope, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And we've paid rent for some of them. We've paid rent for some of them. Yes. Oh yeah. So this is the other thing. I think you mentioned that this place doesn't have uh, accommodation. Yeah, we don't for, have accommodation for students. For students, and that's the that's something we lack, and uh, girls don't want to join the training here because families problem in rural areas. A girl who is leaving the family to a place that has no accommodation, like here, it's like going to prostitution. Oh. Yeah, and girls get married very early, at an early age. So for the husbands, don't, don't want their also. girls away. So if the girl can stay here, leave in the center here, they know they're in school. Yes, rather than letting her take a, a home in Guse, it's like going to them. It's like she wants to prostitute herself. Okay. Yes. How yeah. can people? How can people? Um, uh, we are in the need because we are non-profit. It's hard to make money out of the center as a non-profit project. So we are in the need of new buildings because we want to open new shops in electricity, uh, solar energy, and um, um, we would like to develop uh, new uh, technologies in the construction uh, business. We don't have prefabs in Burkina. But looking at our salaries, I know prefabs will be better for us, mm -hmm. uh, cost effective I mean. And um, if you want to support us, if you are in North America and you want it to be tax deducted, I prefer that you get in touch with uh, International Teams Canada. Uh, that is our partner, first and one partner uh, mm -hmm. since the opening of uh, the center. Okay. Yes, and uh, if you want to support us locally, even if you want to come with your uh, intelligence, you want to come with your technology, we can discuss about that. If you want to uh, give us a, a new building, we are open. If you want to give us tools, we are open. We mm -hmm. are shops. The tools are breaking down like, um, yeah. Every year we, we spend a lot of money uh, repairing tools, so new tools are needed. Mm -hmm. I think everything regarding vocational training is needed. Okay, thank yes. you, thank you so much, guys. This welcome. guy uh, moved from Waga. Imagine, eh? he's a communicator who moved from the city <laughs> to come and stay here. Um, something that a lot of people don't do. <laughs> he left his job, said, I'm going to come and stay here and do this and give back to. Uh, the communities in this area is doing really, really uh, good, and the the work they're doing is really fantastic. Um, so thank you, thank you so much for inviting us and showing us around, guys. I'll show you the gift I got. Thanks. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> do you, if if you are in Wada, do um, do take time to visit and see what they're doing, um, and also support in the ways that he's is said uh, like we said the contact details are in the description and now i'm going to say bye so that we can have the nice lunch that this gentleman has prepared for us and ciao <laughs> oh, he cooked. <laughs> Look, seriously yeah ah guys he cooked it <laughs> bye bye <laughs> disappear <laughs>